Football season is over, but the injury podcast at thelines.com continues on during NBA season. And we have four superstars that are dealing with injuries right now. Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry, Joel Embiid, Giannis Antetokounmpo. And who better to break down those injuries and their significance as the playoffs continue to get closer than the Lions injury expert, Will Carroll. You can find him on Twitter at injury expert. Another season to uh, to break down some injuries here, my friend. Yeah, and there's definitely a ton of them. You know, uh, there was a lot of talk at the All Star break about load management, which I think is a word that most people don't understand. They think it means sitting out a couple of games, but it's really about the workload. And with these four, you see how much this is. I still think the NBA has to do something with the length of the season and the fact that it really doesn't matter. Um, but you, you're seeing these players break down over and over. Uh, and it's tough to watch. Yeah, we're recording this on February the 24th. We'll give you a snapshot of where each of these teams are in the standings, what their futures odds are to win the NBA title, to win their conference, and also um, an interesting little nugget on one of the division races here, which obviously don't matter for playoff seeding, but you can bet division futures as well. And with these injuries, it's, uh, it's an interesting market to look at in the Pacific division. Will has told us coming into this show that three of these injuries are fairly straightforward, but Stephen Curry's is the one that's a little bit more unusual. So stick around for the end of the video. We're going to go into a little bit more depth on what's going on with Stephen Curry. But let's start now in the Eastern Conference, Will, and we'll start with Giannis, because right now, uh, if you look at NBA futures, the Bucks are right there as the third choice in the odds to win the NBA title (laughs) behind the Boston Celtics and the Phoenix Suns after they trade it for Kevin Durant. The Bucks are sitting at plus 600 is the best available price over at DraftKings Sportsbook. And to win the Eastern Conference, they're obviously the second choice behind the Celtics at plus 240 now. Celtics at plus 135. What is Giannis dealing with here and how concerned are you that this could bleed over into the playoffs? Not, uh, I'm not concerned at all. This is a simple wrist break. We saw what happened. He basically ran into the stanchion uh, and and pushed his wrist backwards. It's the functional equivalent of a fall. There's not quite as much of the body weight on it, but he he was moving at a pretty good clip. Uh, So we've all done this. We've fallen. We've run into something. And you just uh, hyperextend the wrist. Uh, one, One or more of the tendons stretched. He had some swelling in there. It can be complex because the wrist is a very, very complex thing. There, there, there's 10 bones that run here in, in two rows. There's all sorts of nerves, blood vessels, uh, cartilage. And if you get any of it out of whack, things uh, don't fit together. They're very small. They're, they're very subject to movement and swelling. So it can be both painful and you can lose some structural integrity. It, it's not nearly that, but they're going to be careful with him. They're going to make sure uh, that he doesn't have that because the game of basketball, it's very likely you fall again. He's going to catch himself. And the, the last thing you want is to have a weakened ligament uh, be damaged even more. Bucks currently sitting at the two seed in the East, one game behind the Celtics. The Sixers are two games behind the Bucks for the two seed. Uh, if you look at the division odds here for the Milwaukee Bucks in the Central, they have a five-game lead over the Cleveland Cavaliers, who uh, and uh, the Bucks have already played 58 games so far. The the Cavs have played uh, 62, so making up that five-game stretch, even with Giannis missing games, is going to be a tough ask. And that's why the Bucks are minus 900 to win the Central. Cavaliers plus 750 to win that division. The other big news out of the Eastern conference was uh, Thursday night. The Sixers get the win 110, 105 with an impressive run right at the end of the game over the Memphis Grizzlies. But uh, Joel Embiid did not have a good game. He was seven for 25 from the floor. Uh, More reports out that he's dealing with a foot injury. He said he's been dealing with it on and off all season long. And will, before I ask you about, I just want to read some of his post game comments here. This is straight from Embiid from the podium. Quote, I feel pretty good. Like I said before the break, whatever it is, it's all about rest. And there's a reason I wasn't part of Saturday, meaning the all-star game, because I wanted to make sure that I could get more rest with this. It's all about trying to get as much rest as possible. I'm good. I don't know what I had, but I'm good. Just happy we got the win. This is not the first time we've heard the word foot injury and Joel Embiid in the same sentence. So that kind of makes Sixers fans 
me included, get a little worried here. But what are we dealing with here? Yeah, there's a couple things. First, let's remember that Joel Embiid at the at the very start of his career had a pretty serious uh, foot injury. It was a navicular bone fracture. It's one of the bones of the arch of the foot. Uh, he had to have two screws in it. <clears throat> I assume those screws are still in there. I don't know that for a fact, but I don't remember him ever having them out. It's com- you know, it, it's kind of 50-50. Sometimes they take them out. Sometimes they leave them in. Uh, it's it's not really a, an issue. But there's a couple things, including one of the things he said that gives us a clue here. He goes, I don't know what I have. And, you know, that sounds like, why don't you know what you have? Because they're not diagnosing it. Because they're used to this. This is inflammation in the foot, likely related to the navicular bone. Um, You know, the problem is, you know, Embiid is huge. You know, he's seven foot. He's 260 pounds. The human body just is not designed to be that big. Uh, you see these guys you know, here in Indiana. We have Zach Eddy uh, up at Purdue with those size 20 feet. Uh, I don't know what size Embiid's are, but the, the, you're not finding them. Probably not too far behind if they're smaller. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it's one of the situations where the bone is, they're just longer. There's more stress on them. Uh, it, the, the, the geometry of it just isn't designed that way. So you often see them over stress. I mean, think of the big men we've lost. Yeah, Bill Russell, or not Bill Russell, Bill Walton. Uh, you think of Russell the way that Embiid's been playing. Uh, but uh, Yao Ming had, had foot problems. That was about the only thing that could stop him. So you see a lot of big men with foot problems, and this is just one of those. So I think when you hear those quotes, when you see his history, it has to be inflammation that he's dealing with. So rest does help. So uh, I'm, I'm a little worried because he did get a couple days rest uh, with the All-Star break, and now it's coming back. They're going to have to sit him some places, so they're going to have to uh, spot him out, find some places to do it. But once you get into the playoffs, it's tougher to do that. You, you can't sit out a couple games of the playoffs, and the schedule tends to be pretty tight. The Sixers' health has always been the issue during this Joel Embiid yeah. era, whether he stays healthy, whether the, the pieces around him stay healthy. Right now, to win the East, they are the third choice, plus 650, the best available price behind the Celtics and the Bucks. As we mentioned, they're sitting as the three seed right now. Overall, in NBA title futures, they are the sixth choice at 13-1. to 1. Um, And there are three West teams ahead of them as well, in the Suns, Nuggets, and the Clippers. So... Uh, For me, as a Sixers fan, it's always been I have no interest in betting this team until we get to the playoffs and see how healthy this roster is, obviously, most notably with Joel Embiid. Let's head over to the Western Conference now, Will. And obviously, the big trade this season was Kevin Durant moving from Brooklyn over to the Phoenix Suns. It just plummeted their odds, or I guess I should say catapulted their odds up the board, but plummeted the price. Uh, the the Suns are um, are plus four fifty to win the NBA title as we record right now. The second choice behind the Celtics to win the West, they are the favorite in some spots at plus two thirty five. Now, if you look at the NBA standings, it's not often where you have a situation where the current five seed in the conference is the favorite to win that conference. But this is the era that we live in in the NBA. Kevin Durant's dealing with a bit of an injury. What can you tell us about it? Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, the, the they're fifth because they didn't have Durant. They're, they're a pretty <laughs> right. good team uh, with some pretty good talent. And now a new owner who's going to be very, very aggressive, it appears. Uh, Durant, uh, some people were surprised. They're like, you can trade somebody who's injured? Yes, of course you can. Uh, you just have to be able to, to accept it. He has a simple MCL sprain. That's the uh, ligament on the inside of the knee. Uh, and it helps with lateral stability. Now, obviously, he has to heal up before he can get, get back out there. Obviously, he's got to have lateral stability. He's got to be able to cut. He's got to be able to move, uh, shuffle, and jump, and land. And you're going to have stresses in every direction on that knee. He's never really had serious knee issues before, so I don't think this is overly worrisome. It's likely a grade 1 plus to a grade 2, uh, which is just the degree of stretching and tearing of that ligament. Uh, it'll heal up on its own. Even in cases where it doesn't heal up on its own, surgeons don't tend to go in and, and do uh, the MCL. Uh, if you think back, Adrian Peterson, when he was playing uh, towards ACL and MCL, 
he finished out his career without an MCL. They, they didn't repair it when they uh, reconstructed his ACL. Uh, obviously, in basketball, there's a lot more lateral mobility that's needed, especially uh, defensively. So uh, Durant should be back as soon as he's got uh, a clean MRI uh, and kind of has his feet under him, literally. But uh, he's certainly going to be a great addition to that Suns lineup. The Pacific Division futures are what's interesting here to me with the Phoenix Suns, at least before the playoffs begin, because you have a situation where the Kings are the three seed, the Clippers are the four seed, the Suns are the five seed in the conference. But in the division, the Kings only have a one and a half game lead over the Clippers and only a two game lead over the Phoenix Suns. And the Suns have played 60 games. The Kings have played 58 games. I know a lot of people in NBA betting circles are expecting regression at some point with the Kings and the Clippers. Uh, we'll see whether that bears out in the regular season standings. I know most people think that'll come in the playoffs at some point. But uh, another interesting nugget here that the Suns steam has gone so far that even though they are two games back in the division, they are as short as minus 165 at Bet MGM to win the Pacific Division. Minus 130 is the best available price. So if you think they catch them, you're going to have to pay good money for it. And if you think that these standings at least hold for the regular season, not saying that they're going to, the Kings are going to make the deepest run in the postseason, but if you think these standings hold at least for the regular season, the Kings are leading the division and are plus 500 right now to win that division, which is wild to me. So, yeah. I mean, do what you want. Do it with that information. What you want out there, everybody. But uh, what's maybe most interesting: the Golden State Warriors are thirty to one to win that division. They are four and a half games out in the division, and we have the Steph Curry injury situation. Will you you previewed at the beginning of the pod here that this is the one out of the four superstars we're talking about that is different that is a little yeah. unusual so tell us what you mean by that yeah this is a, this is an injury you just don't see very often yeah we're going to take one of the most confusing injuries in all sports in the high ankle sprain and essentially turn it on its head you know hmm. we've kind of learned what a high ankle sprain is it's the ligament between the tibia and the fibula the two bones of the lower leg uh at they're just above the ankle and instead of saying syndesmosis uh Somebody came up and said, high ankle. Uh, smart. Easier to say. Well, this is the same thing, except at the top of the leg. Uh, I don't know if we call this a low knee, um, but it's... it's the, A really the, high the, ankle sprain? <laughs> essentially, yeah. It, it's the tibiofibular uh, ligament and the interosseous membrane, which is basically just kind of the sac that holds the, the bones together. Um so it's one of those situations where it's essentially a high ankle sprain, except at the top of the bones rather than at the bottom of the bones. Hmm. Exceptionally unusual. You don't normally see this injury at all because it's a very thick, very strong ligament. Uh, the fact that there's any movement in it is problematic. Um, essentially, those two bones uh, of the, the lower leg are trying to move apart just below the knee. So there's instability. It, it's kind of like standing on stilts uh, that aren't stable. Uh, so it's not that his knee isn't stable. It's that his lower leg isn't stable. And you can see why that would be a significant problem. The other thing is we just don't deal with this. As good as the Warriors medical staff is and as many doctors as they've, con uh, as they've consulted with, and I know they've consulted with virtually all of them. <laughs> when you talk to the super surgeons, uh, they've all had a look at this and uh, kind of gone in on it. And I know one of them, uh, they, they looked at a, a situation with Kobe Bryant a couple of years ago where he had a fracture of the tibial plateau, which is that, that basically where the knee sits on top of uh, and is where that, those two bones separate. Uh, that's called a bumper fracture. Uh, because most people get hit by the bumper of a car and break that bone. It's just right at that height. Um, you know, Kobe dealt with that, and they were worried about how those bones were going to move uh, and what they were going to have to do. Were they going to have to keep them off it, was, which was going to be all sorts of problems? You know, do you have to stay off the leg? And if you do, then you run into situations where the muscles start to atrophy, 
uh, you know, you you have to build yourself back up. If you think back to uh, Paul George when he had that horrible fracture, when he came back, his legs were two different sizes. But you know, now you can't tell years later. Uh, even a year later, you couldn't tell. That's the situation with Curry, is when is the stability going to come back? The other thing that they're a little worried about is that membrane, which, again, is basically just you know a, a little capsule or sac that goes around the muscle and the bone, uh, holds everything together. If you've ever heard of something called compartment syndrome, that's what kind of holds in the fluid in that situation. So, again, they're worried about more swelling. They're worried about fluid buildup. He hasn't had that. Uh, but it was something they're watching out for. And when he gets back to activity, if it's not fully healed, what's it going to do? So this one is just a really complex situation. They're going to have to err on the side of caution. That's why I think they said, eh, let's go another week uh, and make sure this thing is completely stable. And then, you know, he is such a worker. If, you, if you've ever gotten the chance to watch his warm up, it's amazing. It takes forever. He's shooting from everywhere in the gym. Um, but everything looks the same. You know, whether he's shooting from 50 feet, whether he's shooting from 10 feet, his shot looks the same. And if he's not able to do that because of, of a leg injury, because his leg's not fully stable, his shot's going to be off. And I don't know how you're going to be able to adjust for that in a short period of time. I mean, obviously, he's, he's uh, a heck of an athlete and nobody has a better shot in the game. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see how he deals with this how it responds when he starts playing again. Fantastic medical context there. If you found that information useful, smash that like button. Let us know in the comments what you think about these injuries in terms of their chances to win the NBA title. For more context here, Curry was injured on February the 4th. Uh, Matt Burke has a great write-up on some of the reports about his potential return here at thelines.com. Uh, the Warriors president of basketball operations, Bob Myers, went on the local radio station there in the Bay Area on February the 15th and said that Curry is at the facility. He's rehabbing. Um, he's disciplined. His uh, level of discipline to return is his own. He wants it. He wants to be back. He will return as soon as possible. Uh, the athletic Shams uh, said that Curry could be out multiple weeks. He didn't go as far as to say he'd be out a month. So that kind of puts us at a timeline of late February, early March, as we record here on right, February right, right. the 24th. So we're basically in the window now where he could be back at any point. Uh, and for me, Will, if he comes back right now, if you look at Warriors futures, if he comes back here in the next week or so, uh, the Warriors right now are 19 to one to win the NBA title. We know that they have the ceiling to win the title if Curry is on the floor. We've seen yeah. it in recent years. And to win the West, the Warriors have dropped all the way down to the sixth choice at nine to one. And I mentioned before, division might be a little bit too aggressive here with them being four and a half games back. But if he's back sooner in this timetable than later, then there's at least a chance. And you're getting 30 to one to make up four and a half games in the division with a team at the top that a lot of people thought was vulnerable and prone to possible negative regression anyway. So. Um, I think this injury has created potentially a buying opportunity on the Warriors if Curry is back and healthy, because let's not forget that he was putting up MVP type numbers before yeah. he got injured here. So um, I guess just what's your comfort level in, in possibly backing the Warriors if he comes back here before the playoffs? The one key is I want to see him shoot, um, you know, whether that's just a, a workout, whether we get some some sneaky video from the complex uh, or whether it's that first game. I want to see him shoot. I mentioned Kobe Bryant. He had a lot of trouble in the first few games coming back after that bumper fracture, that tibial plateau fracture, uh, which is not what, what, what Curry has, but about the most functionally similar. So I am a little bit worried about him losing his shot for four or five games, having to work through it. Uh, he's going to they're going to play him physically. They're going to bump him on his shot. They're going to see how he lands, whether he's favoring one leg, whether he's falling away. And all those things are things that would throw off that, that beautiful, magnificent shot. Uh, and without that, uh, none of those bets look very good to me uh, on that team. And, and it starts making uh, some of those, uh, those uh, Sacramento bets look a little bit better. But again, this is one of those unknowns. Uh, unless you got some inside information, we don't. 
Uh, I don't know whether Steph is even shooting at this stage. I'm sure he's doing something. Uh, I know he's doing pool work. I know he's done some some treadmill work. But until I see him shoot, I just don't have a ton of confidence. Yeah, the, the I should also mention just where the Warriors are right now in the standings after they've played 59 games. They are the 10 seed. They are 12 and a half back of the one seed. But uh, more importantly here, only four and a half games separating the three seed in the West from the 10 seed, the yeah. Warriors. So they are in that last spot for the play-in game situation. And they really need to make up some ground here to avoid that play-in game situation. But they're only two games behind the Mavericks for the six seed to get out of that that play-in scenario. So Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a crazy scenario out there with, with everybody so tight and with so many things changing. I mean, that Suns team that you look at the record, that means nothing once they get direct. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can take a look uh, at all the injury situations that they've had, including uh, Gary Payton II uh, with, with the Warriors. That that team could get a lot better. They obviously get a lot better with a healthy Curry, uh, with, with Clay Thompson playing well. Uh, you know, they, they've shaken up the team with the trades, but uh, they weren't the only ones active at the trade deadline either. And if the Sacramento haters are right, they're only three and a half games from being in the play in game. So, I mean, it's yeah. it's wild. It's absolutely wild in the West right now with everybody chasing the Denver Nuggets who have a six game lead for the one seed with Jokic putting what is likely a third straight MVP season together here. So we'll, as always, appreciate the insight. Fantastic context for all of these superstars uh, for the latest NBA sportsbook promos. You can find them down in the uh, links in the description. So be sure to check those out. Of course, all of Will's work on these injuries are found at thelines.com, whether it's Steph Curry or Kevin Durant, et cetera. He'll be contributing throughout the uh, the NBA season, throughout March Madness, if there's significant injuries that pop up there. And of course, baseball season is coming along here. And we all know that injuries take a big part of that season, are big storylines when a, you're in a sport that plays 162 games. So stay tuned for all of that. Just because football season is over doesn't mean we are stopping. We are trying to find you the best value 24-7, 365 days a year. And lastly, if you are not in our lines.com free sports betting Discord channel, join us. More than 4,300 community members. Go to the lines.com homepage, top right corner. Hit that Discord button. Join free. If you're using the Discord app, you can go to the role server and click the emojis to make sure you're getting push notifications every time anybody on our staff locks in a bet. And we're still going even though it's not NFL season. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. Best of luck with your bets in the NBA. 